This is absolute. When using a Dremel, I don't care what tool you have in a Dremel, when using a Dremel, you have safety glasses on. No exceptions. Today's episode is made possible through the support of Max Hunt. If you're interested in supporting one of these videos and getting involved and helping in the whole process, check out the links below in the description. There's all kinds of cool stuff you can do. Thank you. Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome back to the shop. Today is all about this little thing. This is episode three on the Project Archie robot and we're building an Nanon Robotics AR3 and today is the first step where we have to like cut metal. We've had to 3D print parts, we've had to drill and tap holes, and today we get to learn about cutting bolts. Now this bolt is really simple. It's a, just a M8 bolt, has to go right there. But the bolt has to go all the way down and sit like that, and we can't have all that sticking through the back. So we got, we got more bolt than we can use. You can see there's, there's a fair bit of bolt sticking through there. So we want to trim this bolt down to about eight millimeters. So first we got to figure out how big is eight millimeters. It's about yay, about what we want. But you know, we're trying to do this professional like, so let's actually measure eight millimeters. Now, this is a set of calipers. I absolutely recommend that you have a set of these and they're, they're not, this is not a particularly awesome, expensive set of calipers. So we make sure we're zeroed. We make sure we're in millimeters. And on this side, like here, on this end, you can measure how wide things are. So we can see it's an eight millimeter bolt. On this end, you can measure these this way. And we want eight millimeters. So we'll get pretty close. I could just leave it there and make all the OCD people go a little nuts. All right, so that's how much bolt we want. So we're gonna just put our finger right on that thread is where we wanna be. And now I'm just gonna get a piece of tape. Brand new roll even, we're fancy. I'll put a piece of tape on there. Right at my high precision thumbnail. Okay. Wrap that right around. All right, so that's about where we want to be, ish. Now this is where we get open to artistic interpretation. There's a dozen different ways to trim that bolt down depending on what tools you have available. And these range from, and I'm, I'm just gonna touch on the most common, basic, obvious ways to do this. Hacksaw, preferably in a vise, you can whittle your way down on that. So you can do that. It'll take a minute, but it'll work, and it'll be pretty accurate. It's going to weeble wobble around a little bit, especially if your hacksaw is one of these kind, but it'll be fine for this application. Second way to do it so with an angle grinder, this is way overkill for this, but it would absolutely work. It'd do it pretty quick, but I'm not going to do this down here because I don't want to throw that amount of sparks all over the room. If I was out in the garage shop, totally, this, this would be fine. And you get through that thing in 20 seconds, you'd be fine. Third way to do it, Dremel. And this is the best combination I feel for speed versus throwing sparks and mess. Um, Still abrasive cutoff disc, fiber reinforced cutoff disc, so eye protection is mandatory with this. Other way is with these. Don't do this. You think you might want to, and they call them bolt cutters. You can cut bolts with these, it'll work. You absolutely can do it with this, don't do it with this. Because if you do it with that, you're gonna gunge up the threads really bad and you're gonna to have to clean a bunch up and you're gonna lose a bunch of bolt. You can do it with those, but if you do it with those, add a full quarter inch beyond and then grind it down. And if you're gonna grind it down with a file or a bench grinder or something, then you might as well start it with the grinder. But if it's what you got, like you can cut this bolt with a pair of bolt cutters and just a file if that's what you got. But if you're not sure, 
you you want to leave extra because you can always whittle it down. It's really hard to stretch these out a little bit, but you can always whittle a millimeter or three off. And the easiest way is hacksaw and just tidy it up. You can also use a bench grinder and start at the end and bring your way down slowly. But just whatever you use, think it through. The material that goes away, that turns into either grinding powder or sawdust or whatever, is called swarf. Chips, things like that, sawdust, chips, etc. that's all swarf. And the space that turns into metal shavings or sawdust or whatever is called the kerf. So the kerf of this blade is really thin. It's the thickness of the blade. That's the kerf. That's what turns into metal shavings. This blade has a slightly wider kerf. This blade has a huge kerf. We're up to like, oh, a little under an eighth inch. So it all depends on what you're doing. I'm just going to cut the thing off, but I want you to understand the different opportunities you had. I'm going to do it with a Dremel and a pair of the awesome Avitec safety glasses. This is absolute. When using a Dremel, I don't care what tool you have in a Dremel, when using a Dremel, you have safety glasses on. No exceptions. Especially, and the worst, is with a fiber wheel. Don't pick that up, it's going to be hot. Okay, we're cut off. Now, that bolt, as it sits right there, two things. One, it's really hot. And two, the end is super sharp and the thread's a little messed up. So we're going to want to clean that up a little bit before we just throw it on the thing. Now, we could do that with just a file. And then I get to use the word bastard file in a video, which would be cool. It's a real thing. Look it up. Um, but I'm going to cheat and hold that in a pair of pliers and do it on a, angle, on a, a bench grinder because it'll be super quick. And we're just going to clean up the sharp edges on the bottom because we want our threads to engage well. All right, so you want to kind of dome the end on it and be good. Now, in the event that you screw up the threads really, really bad, it's easy to get a replacement bolt. I mean, it's like a 10 cent part. It's not a big deal. Or if you have the proper die, an M8 die, you can chase the threads on here and push them back where they belong. You can even do it with a tiny file and like get rid of the, the junk thread and stuff like that. This bolt isn't really under any stress at all. This is a very, very light duty part. So you've got a lot of flexibility what you can do in this particular instance. If it was me, I'd just get a new bolt. It's like a quarter, you can do this. All right, so we've got our plate. This is our J1 turret plate. And this is our alignment indexing bolt. And we're gonna very, now we've, We've done dirty, dirty things to this thread, so we want to be really careful if we start thre threading it in there. If one of those threads is mashed over or something, it might not take, and we might have to do some things to straighten out those threads. Let's try it, though. Oh, we're okay. All right, so we've got it in there, and now we need to align it Imagine a point, here we'll get some lines to work off of. There's going to be a thing that spins around and has to interact with this. 
So we need to imagine a point tangent to the center of the bolt circle. So that line takes us right through the middle. And we're going to go across to that line. So that we're pretty close. It's not going to be dead on exact, but it doesn't have to be for this. So we want this bolt, instead of being like flush to here or just in any which way, we don't want the bolt square there. We want the flat side of the bolt to end up flat to here. It's going to be like that. Because we want to go from the center of the bolt circle, which is over here, out to there. Okay, so we'll lay that piece of tape in like that. And that gives us a line tangent to the bolt circle. So I'm going to bring this so it's just reasonably tight. Now I'm going to come back later as we get further into the assembly and I'm going to add Loctite blue on all these to make them nice and uh, resistant to vibrating loose or anything. But at this stage I'm not Loctiting anything. I just want to make sure I got it all together. And I'll just take it apart and goop it later. But now we can see this is tangent to the center of the bolt circle there. That's our center point. And that, so that when a thing swings around and hits that, I think it's a limit switch probably, boop, and it hits it on the flat sides. So there you go. That's your next step. We cut a bolt. You made a custom part. How cool are you? you made a custom part. So now you have made your own custom square head M8 by 8 bolt. By the way, if you can dig up somewhere a square head M8 8 millimeter long bolt or even maybe a 10 millimeter long bolt, you don't have to do this. You can, you might be able to find one of those at Fastenal or something. I don't know. I've never seen one, but that's our part for today. Thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you for helping build a robot. And when we come back, we're going to bolt a whole lot of stuff to this. It's going to be cool. You guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden and as always, We'll see you next time. This, this is what I'm dealing with every day. This. This is my life now. Mark, camera sync one.